Dr. David Gluck. Good to see you again. Nice seeing you again. Okay. Uh, tell me about yourself. What, what, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> I'm now in retirement. Uh, I'm a board certified specialist in uh, both internal medicine and preventive medicine. Uh, trained at uh, Cornell Medical College. Uh, straight medical residency at Upstate Medical Center. Uh, and then uh, my entire career was in the subspecialty of occupational medicine. How did, how did you get involved with LDN? Well, I grew up with Bernie Byharry, who is the discoverer of the clinical effects. And back in the mid-80s, Bernie was telling me about this uh, medication that he discovered uh, that works well for men with, uh, or for people with HIV. Um, and when I began to hear the story, I said, why aren't we standing on rooftops and shouting to the world about this? Uh, and then, uh, all of these years since the mid-80s have discovered, uh, to my dismay, that it's not that easy. That um, people don't beat a path to somebody who invents a better mousetrap. They just uh, don't want to hear about something that challenges the old paradigms. Uh, and this does challenge that. There are a lot of ingrained ideas in medicine that uh, LDN challenges. And I suspect also that there are pharmaceutical firms who uh, perhaps have product lines. This is my challenge. Uh, so it's been a long, long pull. Not being a clinician, but what would you, but to use the clinical terms, what would you see as a positive outcome of your efforts? What are you looking to do? What's oh, that goal? Uh, the goal? Uh, the goal would be, I would, I would say briefly, when, when low-dose naltrexone becomes the cover story for Time Magazine, or is on the cover of the New York Times and the, and the Washington Post, uh, I think I'll have reached my goal, because that's where it deserves to be. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is probably uh, the most important medication uh, in 50 years, discovery. It had the misfortune of being discovered by a private practitioner, essentially. And so it came with no credentials from an important university laboratory. Um, people can't believe it. But in fact, this is something that, in a wink and without difficulty, upregulates the immune system and gives people back the immune system that they need. And one of the things that uh, I would question is, there's a, an, oak, an old Greek mythology about an nepenthe. It's the pill that you take and it solves all of your problems. Mm -hmm. Now, people are going to ask, you know, what doesn't it work for? But, but how would you um, argue with the medical establishment that this is or this isn't a nepenthe? Oh, well, it's not meant to be a cure-all. Uh, there are uh, groups of disorders, large groups, uh, each of which are characterized by uh, a lack of sufficient immune response. All of the autoimmune disorders, which is a very lengthy list, 140, 200 diseases, and more, and counting, because there are many diseases that are etiology unknown that surely are going to turn out to be autoimmune disorders. These are all diseases of immunodeficiency. The moment the low-dose naltrexone uh, tricks the body uh, while the patient is sleeping at night into producing more endorphins. Those endorphins have a beneficial upregulating effect on the immune system. The moment that immune system is back toward normal, that immune system now knows the difference between self and other, and the attack stops. And so those autoimmune diseases stop progressing. That's one group. The cancers and uh, although it's become a truism, you know, every cancer is different. But the reason why older people have such a high incidence of cancer is because they have a weakened immune system, for the most part. And so the point with low-dose naltrexone here is to use it to help prevent cancers or recurrence of cancer in those who are at risk or in family. Um, or to prevent spread or further spread of a cancer that's obvious and still there. Uh, natural killer cells do that, and uh, the immune system apparently is too weakened 
uh, and battered in an older person, if you can get low dose naltrexone in there for four to six months, you, you have a fighting chance. And by Harry's experience, 50% uh, of people who had failed every standard medical modality, radiation, chemo, and so forth, so on, and still had an unresponsive, difficult situation, 50% of them, they lived long enough to be able to take low dose naltrexone four to six months, 50% the tumor stopped growing. So you have autoimmune diseases, you have cancers, and of major importance, HIV AIDS. And when you think that in Africa alone, there are probably 20 to 30 million people for whom the new antiretrovirals, they'll never get them. Too costly, out of reach, the infrastructure isn't there to bring it. Who could, who could benefit from taking low-dose naltrexone? It's really a, a, a tragedy. Have you had any involvement with the government, the FDA? Well, you get, you get an answer from the FDA that they don't run clinical trials. Uh, you know, it's an appropriate answer. They have to be approached by a commercial firm, a pharmaceutical firm. So it isn't their job, so to speak. Well, wouldn't NIH or some group? We've been to NIH, and we were caught up in their very careful bureaucracy. Um, when I say we, um, we pounded at the NCI, <coughs> excuse me, to get best case series to their attention. Uh, and somebody from the NCI came to look at the cancer cases, walked away with um, 15 cases that at first blush seemed to fit their sine qua non criterion. The major criterion is a person who did better on your drug that you're bringing us has to have been only on that drug, nothing else. Imagine you're dying of cancer, you've been through all these other things, now, in desperation, you've come to Dr. By Harry's office. He's starting your low dose naltrexone. Are you not also going to take Aunt Sadie's apple cider that helped her cousin and, and this one's magic formula at the same time and 20 pills? Of, of course. Well, that's what they found out. They actually dropped somebody from the series who was found to have been in Mexico and took Laetril, which the NCI itself had already found has no effect whatsoever. So they spent three years looking at all these cases, and they really couldn't get enough cases who were pure, who only took low-dose naltrexone, and their tumors stopped growing. So that's how far we got with the NCI, bureaucracy that had to prove that it was not being capricious in supporting low-dose naltrexone because it didn't meet all their special criteria. Let me ask you a hard question. It's estimated in the billions of dollars to treat HIV AIDS patients in Africa right now. That would solve, quote unquote, solve the problem. How much would it cost in terms of naltrexone? Well, let's say that <clears throat> tomorrow the world woke up to the fact that naltrexone is effective, should be used, fits it perfectly, single capsule oral at night, doesn't need a refrigerator, no injection. No special infrastructure needed, no special testing needed. It has no toxicity, has virtually no side effects. Let's do it in Africa. Um, 300 and some odd dollars a year at the lowest, 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 lowest cost. So if somebody has any substantial amount of immune system left, let's say over 250 3D4 cell, uh, CD4 cells, they would all be uh, very good candidates to taking low-dose naltrexone only. If you had a message to give to the physicians and the patients who are going to be watching it, what would your message be? Uh, I would say that they should bring uh, pressure to bear on their academic institutions to take a look at this, get interested in it, and organize clinical trials of it. It has no downside. Uh, there is no toxicity. After all, there's no real toxicity with the 50 milligram naltrexone that's been around since the early 1980s for heroin abuse. Um, the only cautionary warning on it is for liver toxicity, and that really came about because uh, in their early trials with DuPont in the early years, I think at 250 milligrams, there was some increase in uh, uh, liver uh, enzymes. And uh, proof of the pudding is that it's been approved for the use of use in alcoholics who, of course, have liver problems, and there's been no problem. So, so four and a half milligrams is not going to cause a problem. Take-home messages: We got to get it studied. Got to get it studied, and we got to get it out there. Absolutely.